everybody. Hello. Um, I'm going to do something a little different today than I usually do. Is uh, I'm going to try to uh, just not do a political or philosophical rant. Just tell you stories, which, well, you know, it's almost history now when I tell a story because, you know, it sneaks up on you, but you get older. I was just like... A few years ago, I wasn't paying any attention. I was like, you know, ch bird dog and chicks and playing in a rock band or playing football. And now, you know, I just blink my eyes and then suddenly I'm old. You know, I don't know what happened. But uh, one of the things I, I tell you, old guys like me, you know, we get different kinds of thrills than when we were young, you know, as we were we were smoking dope and chasing girls and and this, you know climbing mountains and stuff nowadays you know i get these uh like gardening is the one that i do a lot a little or a little bit you know i get myself a little garden and uh, like it's kind of weird how i get an excitement out of watching stuff grow and it, it's kind of weird because it takes forever so like I'll give you an example of uh, I, I last year, the year before, a couple of years now, I've had asparagus in the yard. And uh, the asparagus, in case people don't know about it, is not what it looks like when you buy it in the store. Uh, that's just the young shoots that come up like two or three times a year. And then uh, what happens really with asparagus, you got to kind of let it grow out a little bit. It turns into like the six or seven foot high bush or fern, it looks like. And it doesn't look anything like asparagus. And then uh, it gets little flowers on it. And then it grows little asparagus berries that are like red balls. And and last year, I picked a bunch of them and stuck them in a jar. And, and then in the middle of the winter, I separated a bunch of them out I had like about 30, 40 of these berries, and I only separated out like a couple dozen of these little black seeds from inside of it. And then last February, I went out when it was a warm day and got a bunch of dirt into these tiny little pots, and I planted, you know, 40 something little seeds or little black seeds. And then I put them inside, and I put them where the sun was, and I watered them every two or three days. And I'm waiting for it. You know, this is, how does this happen, you know? It doesn't just pop up the next day. Matter of fact, weeds started growing inside those pots because I took the dirt out of a, you know, out of a old pot I had. And, and they get these little things growing up, and I'm thinking, is that asparagus? Uh, and then I had to look at the Internet to see what, so asparagus seedlings look like and they don't have leaves on them they're they look like little asparagus you know so i'm thinking maybe all these seeds are a dud or something and then over a month they had been in the ground suddenly pop 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 up came these uh, these little skinny asparagus plants i mean they kind of look like asparagus but they're about as thin as as a thread you know, they're, they're thinner than grass blades. And I said, oh, and I'm, here's, see, this is how you get your thrills when you're like an old fart. I'm dancing around. Hey, they, they're growing. And then it's, uh, I looked at the weather report and there wasn't a single, there was not a single uh, freezing day on the weather report. And I said, great, it's time to plant. Of course, asparagus can stand cold weather. It can stand frost. It's a, it's not a tropical plant. It's a northern plant. So, I went outside and I cleared. I, I raked out all the leaves and raked out all the old plants, and and uh, and then I turned over the garden with a shovel. You know, I had to, that took like about two hours, and it's not that big of a garden. And then I raked it all out, and it looks nice and smooth. And then yesterday I went out and I planted uh, what would be, I guess, 13 asparagus, little, little skinny, uh, tiny, thread-thick asparagus plants I planted. I, I separated them by about two feet. I hope that's enough. 
And I looked out, it rained last night, and I looked out there today, and they seem to be thriving so far. I also planted, um, I also planted some bok choy and some green peppers. So I'm going to have bok choy, green peppers, asparagus, oregano. We always grow basil, and we're going to put tomatoes and plants. How exciting is that? You know, that's uh, that's how you get your thrills when you're when you're old. Um, you know, and, and people look at me and they say, why don't you just go to the, like, especially with tomatoes, this is true. You know, you spend all this time and effort putting together tomatoes and, uh, you, you can go to the store and buy a tomato for less than a buck, you know? I mean, a big tomato for less than a buck, especially during season, you know, that people practically throw them at you, you know? And, um, it's just, I don't know. It's kind of like, this thing to go back in time you know, like I'm living in 1842 or something you know it's the same motivation I, I will tell you that people do when they go hunting or they go fishing you know you live in the city you know you see these guys they crack me up they have they live in a, a condominium somewhere in the middle of a city and they ride around in a pickup truck like you know, wear a cow, you know, wear a baseball cap and got a gun rack on the back of their truck and they act like they're living in 1842 or something well, like with a pickup truck. And they go hunting every winter, you know. Well, one of the things I used to do quite a bit was uh, fish. I used to fit. My dad loved to fish. And I used to fish when I was younger quite a bit. And, and it's kind of the same thing as gardening in a way. I mean... It, it, they had a, a some kind of a, a report that they did or a study that showed that out of all sports, the, the, the people spend more money on fishing equipment than anything else, more than golf, more than football or baseball or basketball or anything. The, the highest volume of sales of any sport is for fishing equipment. You know, and think about it. I mean, you got to buy... Besides buying a rod and reel and the line and the hooks and the bait and the, you got people buy bass boats and and fish finders and stuff. And and this this is kind of like, here's a story about when I was about a kid, about ten or eleven years old. They had we had this neighbor that lived next door to us, and I'm not, I'm gonna not gonna mention his name, but he had a big fishing boat at least it looked big to me it was about 20 foot long fishing boat with a big 100 horsepower outboard motor on it and he kept it in his garage you know, like 99 percent of the time you take it out like three or four times a year and we were sitting around one early sunday morning in, in june i think it was and it was a nice day it was turned out um, and i'm getting ready for church and everything and and this guy next door, who was a Protestant, but he was a good, you know, Christian Protestant guy. But he's, he yells over, hey, Bob, that's my dad's name. How about you and your boys going fishing with me today in my boat? And everybody, all my brothers, you know, I have a bunch of brothers. You know, they all say, yeah, yeah, let's go fishing. But me, the big dork that I am, the, you know, you wonder why I put out all these philosophy things and all that. And it says... I'm like, why no? I can't do that. It's Sunday. I have to go to Mass on Sunday. It's, you know, the Catholics say it's a sin if you don't go to Mass on Sunday. My brother's like, oh, come on, come on, come on with us, man. We're going to catch fish. And I said, well, no, I, I, I felt, you know, I was a holy boy back then. I was very religious. You know, I used to love God and God loved me back. And, and you know, I, I was very holy back then. And uh, so I went to church, and they went fishing. You know, I came home, and they didn't get home till about 5 o'clock, you know, something in the evening, 6 o'clock in the evening. And they come rolling in there, and they're like, yay, yay, we caught 320 perch, and we caught like 10 walleye and a couple of blue pike. And I was like, huh? You know, like. Anyway, we all cleaned the fish, and the next week we had a big fish fry. At least I got to eat the fish, right? But, but uh, you know, I told this story to one of my friends, you know, years later, you know, 
a good a Tommy Roz if you want to look him up on the on the internet and he made up a song about it which went something like uh, oh Jesus was a fisherman a lucky man and all this he says and the, and he's saying the the chorus is so if you want to catch a perch don't go to church and if you want to catch a bass don't go to mass so that's the moral of the story i guess if you want to catch a perch don't go to church and if you want to catch a, a bass don't go to mass you know eh. anyway um you know it, it's like it, it is sort of a a strange thing though that you go fishing in this day and age and you know pull living creatures out of the dirty water that, that's you know lay, the lakes and everything and when, every time we got skunked which let's face it i was never a very good fisherman we when i when i got skunked and my friend you know we always had a ritual we'd go to mcdonald's and get filet of fish sandwiches which in a way i guess makes sense you know but anyway that that's a story and, and maybe that's kind of like uh, made me kind of lose my faith a little bit there you know it doesn't take much i suppose huh